is time for a new game. I have beaten... Um, I, I... Oh, I beat the last game I was doing. Um, Zone of the Enders 2. So now it's time to do another tactical RPG. Tactics Ogre is clean together. Doing the PSP version. I'm doing it in an emulator for a variety of reasons. Part of partially due to quality of life features. Partially just doing it, it work but It just works better kind of doing it this way. In terms of graphic stuff. Behold, Let's the see our little... Easier thing. I want to fiddle a little bit with some of the, the graphical settings here. Um, just the to here stuff out. Um, history for dominion over these I'm using the anti-aliasing. Anti-burning mode. I want to His name, Dogama here. Um, but history I think I fiddled with things enough. Dynast um... So, anyway, took the disparate races of men calling the islands home and anyway, united them as one. He encouraged this one marriage between clans, this is a big advanced technical game. I am playing um, strategy kingdom. RPG or tactical RPG. I will be, century, the I will be using a guide. I tend to use and guides and facts and so forth. In this case, I'll be using the embers of discord. It is a Brady Games guide upon the death of the king. Abuna Branton Moore incited the ruling Bakram to declare the independence of their royal city of Hyde. Yet the schemings of the Abuna had just begun. Backed by the Holy Lodician Empire to the north, Branton created the Bakram Valerian. Useful background information, probably. Himself as regent. He would have seen his rule span the Isles were it not for Lancelot Tartaros, high champion of the Dark Knights of Lodis. Lancelot warned against such reckless expansion, and reluctantly, Branton reined in his troops. This left two clans oh, right. to vie for supremacy in the south, the Galgastani and the Wallister. Seven men in ten were Galgastani, and on order of Hierophant Leander Balbatos, the Galgastani declared blood war against the weaker Wallister in a move to claim the south as their own. Valeria watched as the wholesale slaughter of the Wallister race began. Duke Judah Runway led the Wallister in resistance, but they were far outmatched, and in the span of half a year, they'd been brought to their knees. Borbatos proclaimed the kingdom of Galgastan, and with it, an official end to the blood war. But these things would bring no end to Wallister's suffering. A piecemeal resistance continued, yet with their duke in chains, efforts flagged. In time, many of the Wallister resigned themselves to eke out such life as they could in the small province allotted them by Balbatos and the Galgastani. Victory begets peace, and for once the battlefields of Valeria stand silent. Yet none believe the calm will last. Right, so... If this is mentally ringing any bells for you, um, that's because this game's plot development was very much influenced and inspired by the temporary events when this game came out for the for the uh, Super Nintendo and PlayStation, namely the genocide in Bosnia and Herzegovina um, of the ethnic Albanian population. And the developer of the game, uh, the lead developer, when look this up to make sure I get this correct. Um, Matsuno, I don't remember the first name. Um, Yasumi Matsuno, um, watching coverage of it and the U.S. intervention, uh, U.S. NATO intervention, or U.S. NATO. Um, U.S. U.N. NATO uh, intervent peacekeeping up intervention. So, new game. In the age of war, the wheel begins to turn. Chosen child, what is your name? 
I will probably fiddle with these graphics settings some more once we actually get into grab the text screen to the actual mechanical gameplay. So why I'm doing the Tactics Ogre version, or the PSP version, is there are some quality of life features that this game version has that other versions don't have. I'm going to stick with the stock name just for the sake of what making things a little easier when looking at the guy. However, for other characters, they will be getting renamed. So, when were you born? So, there's going to be a companion thread for this Let's Play on RPG.net and the edited version of this go public. Uh, if you, perchance, would like to have a character named after yourself, please go into that thread and post. Uh, once it goes live, I will add that to the subject to the um, show notes for the various episodes. If you wish to have a character in the game named after you, I should be able to edit them after the fact. All right. And this is some Ultima style questions. I'll uh, ask you like Ultima or some of the uh, early Elder Scrolls games or asking you some questions to help spec out your characters. Now, depending on how you answer these will determine how you how your character specs out. So, it's actually worthwhile to look at the back guy to see how this impacts your stats. So this is Wheel of Fortune. Four leaders, it gives me an XP uh, select choosing. So depending on what you choose, it determines what stats increase. So for example, Ill luck gives me a bunch more magic points and intelligent and a bonus to intelligence financial stats. Whereas if I do poor leadership, that will give me um, more hit points and more strength. So, so, if, so basically, if you want to do someone more up front, like in your face, you want to do uh, an adequate troops. If you want to do someone who's more of a caster, you'll say, I'll, I'll luck is why we lost. And if you want something more balanced, would you say poor leadership? I'm going to go for a little more balance here. Do. Permit. I had no fear of failure. These five are more or less variable, as far as which ones you get. I'll pull something up on the dashboard over here. Let's have that if I need it. So, Saint Hermit, Saint Hermit, I have no fear of failure. A sage will grant you a single piece of wisdom. What would you learn of him? Fine. You do, want to, you do want to boost your defensive stats because if your hero goes down, you, you fail automatically. Put this into Winning Hearts, which basically boosts all my defensive stats. So, Victory and Winning Hearts both... Victory and Winning Hearts both boost your defensive stats. Um... Winning hearts gets you more hit points. Victory gets you more magic points.
a little bit more avoidance. Let's do Secret of Victory. The Devil, all must bear in dignity. A Devil will grant you any wish for a price. What are you willing to endure? Protest disfigurement, complete isolation, or relentless fear? Isolation is the most defense boosting one. Interesting. This is so much what the stats do. Let's have a better explanation of what the stats do. Give me a second. It's more important, useful to have this sometimes. It's like, okay, what exactly do these stats do and how do they impact what they're doing? All right, so mind is... Okay, so... Int is... Offensive... Int is boost your offensive magic. Mind is special skills and offensive and defensive magic. So, mind is better. So, interestingly here... Um... The isolation... Boost your... Avoidance and resistance, which are both of those are two of your three main um, defensive stats. Like there's two defensive stats in your or two defensive stats in general. Um, and your mind, which affects how your spell abilities do. So plus your strength. But the fear boosts your magic points, but also your strength and your intelligence, but not your um, mind necessarily. Like magic points, not um, hit points. I want to go with complete isolation. My priestess, chains of faith bind the heart. All men have flaws. Which of yours would you remedy? Cloth, my envy, or my pride? Pride's the primary defensive one. It also has the advantage of doing, um... Uh, boosting hit points and magic points. Um, Envy does just hit points, but by a lot. Also, your strength and vitality makes it really good. Again, if you're if you're going for a melee build, this is what you want to go with. And sloth, again, hit points and magic points, and then vitality, dex, and agility. So, um, if you're doing planning to do more range based character, like also self put Make perfect sense for that one there. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go pride and be, just be a little more tanky. Last one, the chariot means and ends. How do you define victory? Vanquishing my foes, ending the conflict, or preserving my allies? Vanquishing my foes is the tankier one. Any of the conflict is the get get, get in their face and melee one. Actually, this one's like tankier, but it still gives you a strength boost. The bigger strength boost, actually. More magic focused and a boost to mind. My suspicion is this one is more if you're playing uh, defensive. If you're trying to give your character work better as a more defensive focused spellcaster. So, I'm gonna go. Dash my enemies, see them driven before me, and etc., etc., etc. path we walk, the curtain rises. Quick. 
Ogre Battle Saga, Saga Episode 8. These are not actually in any real particular order. This is technically after Tactics Ogre. Oh, we're from Bookmark. Um, Ogre Battle, but. How much is very. But the edges would be over scanned, that would be hidden by the screen for the PSP. Not sure if this would have shown up on overscan for the uh, uh if for the PlayStation 2. Highlights of the game plot to come. So we have had both spring pollen and summer summer heat. So that's that's fine. Chapter one: There is blood on my hands. How long till it lies on my heart? Well, technically, there's blood going through your heart. All, but I I see what you're saying. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.